to the Lincoln Park Council meeting for July 8th. Um, if we could all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, I don't see that our, our minister's here this week. Um, so I'm just going to ask everybody, please remember Virginia uh, Mondin, former councilwoman and uh, very, very active in the city. Um, please remember her and her family as she has passed. So, moment of silence, please. Okay, if we could have a roll call, please. Certainly. Council Persons Bear? Here. Dupre? Here. Ross? Here. Salcedo? Here. Zor? Here. Councilwoman Tobin is not here. Mayor Higgins? Here. Um, of uh, uh, the mayor's remarks, I would like to talk a little bit about Virginia. She was uh, very much a friend of Lincoln Park and very much a, a very big part of Lincoln Park in many, many ways. Um, she was a big part of the American Legion. She was a big part of the Knights of Columbus. She served on the city council from 1991 to 19, um, what was it? To seem for 93 quite a while. for her first term. From, from to 1993 and then from 1997 to 2003. I personally served on three different commissions with her. Um, and, and we started out as, as political foes and got to be very good friends because that's the kind of person she was. Um, we, we set side, things aside, we got things done together. And um, she will be sorely missed in the city. And um, I, we could go on forever and talk about Virginia because she was the kind of a person that was always there and was always involved and always helped. And uh, the city clerk has put something together and I'd like to ask her to read it. Former Councilwoman Virginia Monin passed away early this morning following a major heart attack and short hospice period at Wyandotte Hospital. She served her first term on council from 1991 to 1993. She was re-elected in 1997 and served three more terms from 1997 until 2003. She was a member of several commissions including the Cultural Commission, the Community Improvement Commission, and was currently a member of the Historical Commission. She was active in many civic activities including the Memorial Day Parade cruising down river as well as multiple service groups and several youth sports organizations a private memorial service will be held for family at a later date donations in lieu of flowers may be made to Wyandotte Henry Ford Hospice American Legion post 67 or the Lincoln Park Historical Society so to tell you what kind of a service and type person she was she was still sitting on the um, Historical Commission um, as we speak out, I speak out a lot about we need new people to step forward. This will be another place that we will need to step forward. To fill her shoes, we will need somebody who is a, a, a great person who will, who's willing to step forward and help, as Virginia did. Um, uh, other things I'd like to remark real quickly on uh, Mayor's remarks this week. Um, I got to do two different tours this week on, on things that we've been talking about in the city for a long time. Uh, the owners, the new owners of the trailer park were in town. Uh, we took a tour of the trailer park. Um, then we had a meeting to discuss uh, the future of it. Um, and I'm very happy to announce that there are very good plans coming. Um, there are some things that we're going to have to talk about on the council to move things forward. but. Um, I believe they are on board to move things forward to make that community back to where it should be and eliminate a lot of just bad things in that trailer park. They openly admit there's a lot of problems and they are willing to help and uh, I think we have finally found a partner that will help us get it done. So I'm very happy with that. 
I'm also going to say that we, I also, I've gotten many, many calls um, from neighborhoods talking about the abandoned hospital. Um, we took the time, uh, the police went over there this week, they cleared it out, they made sure it was safe. Um, we took a, took a look at it. There we brought some investors in to look at the property. Um, we are hopefully getting some movement on the hospital as well. So just a couple of things that uh, are moving forward in the city. Um, along with, of course, if you drive down Southfield, I'm going to keep saying it, Sears is almost gone. Mm -hmm. So, and, and the first two buildings they have already put in for um, to start rebuilding. So very good things are happening. Um, also, a couple of big things from Parks and Recreation this week. Um, I'm, again, I'm going to call on our city clerk. Um, whereas Parks and Recreation is an integral part of communities throughout this country, including the City of Lincoln Park, and whereas Parks and Recreation promote health and wellness, improving the physical and mental health of people who live near parks, and where Parks and Recreation promotes time spent in nature, which positively impacts mental health by increasing cognitive performance and well-being, and alleviating illnesses such as depression, attention deficit or disorders, and Alzheimer's, and where Parks and Recreation encourages physical activity by providing space for popular sports, hiking trails, swimming pools, and many other activities designed to promote active lifestyles. And whereas Parks and Recreation is a leading provider of he healthy meals, nutrition services, and education, and whereas Park and Recreation programming and education activities such as out-of-school time programming, youth sports, and environmental education are critical to childhood development, and whereas Parks and Recreation increases a community's economic prosperity, through increased property values, expansion of the local tax base, increased tourism, the attraction and retention of businesses, and crime reduction. And whereas Parks and Recreation is fundamental to the environmental well-being of our community. And whereas Parks and Recreation is essential and adaptable infrastructure that makes our communities resilient in the face of natural disasters and climate change. And whereas our Parks and rec Natural Recreation areas ensure the ecological beauty of our community and provide a place for children and adults to connect with nature and recreate and recreate outdoors and whereas the US House of Representatives has designated July as Parks and Recreation Month and whereas the city of Lincoln Park recognizes the benefits derived from park and recreation resources now therefore be it declared by the mayor of Lincoln Park that July is recognized as Park and Recreation Month in the city of Lincoln Park and then the other one reads, whereas the City of Lincoln Park Mayor and City Council recognizes that the field of parks and recreation is a diverse and comprehensive system that improves personal, social, environmental, and economic health. And whereas the Mayor and City Council recognizes the importance and benefits of park and recreation services that enrich the lives of its community members and help make this community a desirable place to live, work, play, and visit. And whereas the Mayor and City Council supports the skilled work of parks and recreation professionals Professionals to strengthen community cohesion and resiliency, connect people with nature and each other, and provide and promote promote opportunities for healthy living and equity and environmental sustainability. And whereas the mayor and council value the essential services that park and recreation professionals and volunteers perform to provide recreational and developmental enrichment for our children, youth, adults, and older adults, and to ensure our parks and recreational spaces are clean, safe, inclusive, welcoming, and ready to use, now, therefore, be it declared by the mayor that July 19th, 2024, is Park and Recreation Professionals Day in the city of Lincoln Park. I just want to say that our Parks and Recreation Department does an amazing job with the little bit of funds that they get, and uh, they do amazing things over there they, for the kids, the programs, the, the concerts, um, everything that goes on, and they have big plans coming in the future um, including the, the new tennis court that's coming on in the back of Youth Center Park. Um, so, again, congratulations to the Parks and Recreation Department. And speaking of the Parks and Recreation Department, this past week, um, 4th of July, the annual, well, it wasn't the 4th of July, but the weekend of 4th of July, we had the annual Battle of the Bands. And right here, we have this pretty purple trophy. Um, and we had uh, a pretty good crowd over there. 
and uh, we have the winners here tonight. Uh, the half of it won, and if you please come up forward, we would like to uh, congratulate you. There you go. Yay. Congratulations. Good job, guys. Um, I will say that uh, af after the voting was in, um, the, the ban got 46% of the votes. Um, so, you know, clearly, really, really well liked, and congratulations again. And with that, we're going to move on to the uh, DVB uh, property. That dangerous building property. Um, public, hearing. public hearing. Yeah, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Mayor, we're going to question, since this is the building official's first meeting here, if you permit me to question him as to what he's presenting. And first, if you'd call out the address so the public will know what address we're talking about on the agenda, and he'll explain why the Dangerous Buildings Board determined it should be demolished based upon the investigation of the building department and its officials. Okay, we're talking about 2028 Austin. Mm -hmm. Sir, would you indicate to the mayor the findings of the building department that were presented to the Dangerous Building Board just in basic summary, understanding that you were not the official superintendent at that time, but you have reviewed the files and followed up to corroborate the investigation and the decision of the Dangerous Buildings Board? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, in brief, uh, we've been to that site over the last year uh, 11 times, and very early on it was determined that it was a dangerous building, um, it was clearly neglected, and in need of um, um, immediate care and uh, to be secured. Now, do you determine, based upon that, that it should be submitted to the Dangerous Buildings Board for a finding that it could not be rehabilitated, that it was beyond any reasonable repair and presented an immediate peril to public health, safety, and welfare, not only of any occupant of the building, but of the neighborhood? Yeah, that's that's absolutely uh, the case. It's uh, certainly beyond repair. It's in such a state right now. Uh, the best thing would be to, uh, you know, demolish the building. In the time period from when you presented that to the Dangerous Buildings Board to this meeting today, has anyone come forward to offer to pull a permit or take other moves? or motives to repair or make the facility safe? Uh, absolutely no one has come forward and no permits have been applied for at all uh, in our system uh, at 2028 Austin. Now, sir, the council is going to ask you to reiterate what the decision was of the Dangerous Buildings Board, and I presume you're asking them to affirm the decision to fix, repair, demolish in a short period of time, and at this point you move to demolition based upon the inaction. Is that correct? That is correct. So your recommendation is that it's not safe, it's not a safe structure, and it should be torn down immediately to make safe for the neighborhood. Yes, yes, that is my recommendation. And Mayor and Council, it's your opportunity now to question the building official who has presented the findings of not only his department, but the decision of the Dangerous Buildings Board. He's asking you to affirm their decision, asking as the appellate board that renders, renders the final decision based upon the city charter. Okay, first I'm going to ask you if there's anybody on the Council has any questions. I have a question. Yes. Um, the is there any asbestos in this home? Do you know? I, Are you uh, aware of any? Yeah, I, I did view that report, and so there is no asbestos in the report. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody on the other council has a question? Is there anybody in the public would like to make a comment on this? Is there anybody from that address would like to comment on it? Very good. Hearing nothing, we will close the public hearing and we will move on all right thank you very much all right we'll move on to the consent agenda uh, first we have the approval of the regular meeting regular meetings for the meet meet I'm sorry <laughs> minutes for the regular meeting of June 24th 
the approval of the minutes for the closed session for collective bargaining on June 24th, the approval of counts and claims payable, solicit bids for fire hose replacement, solicit bids for fire rescue airbags, admit the, the policy and procedure for a manual home program, schedule a study session for, with the U.S. representative, accept the CDBG DR grant, approve the block party in 500 block of mill. Taking off the one about the representative, turns out that's something that he's doing at another location on that night, not here. Okay, that's, that's not what he told us. All right, okay. and we will be taking G off. Uh, apparently, we have decided to do it someplace else that night. I'll move. Okay. I'll support. Council Persons Ross? Yes. Bear? Yes. Dupre? Yes. Salcedo? Yes. Soar? Yes. And Mayor Higgins? Yes. Thank you. Yes, uh, we'll have okay. the city clerk read this one. Okay. So whereas the Dangerous Building and Code of Appeals Board is issued an order to demolish the structure located at 2028 Austin, said order being issued subsequent to a hearing of the facts pertaining to this matter and identified as DBB number 2307, which was held on November 30th, 2023, in accordance with section 1444.04 of the codified ordinances of the City of Lincoln Park, and whereas the Dangerous Building and Code of Appeals Board has filed a report of its findings and a copy of its order with this council, and with each party having a recorded interest in the subject project property and whereas the city council has established the date of July 8th 2024 the date for a hearing to review the findings and order of said board the owner or party of interest having been given the opportunity to show cause why said structure should not be demolished and the council having duly held such hearing now therefore be it resolved that said order of dangerous <coughs> building and code of appeal <coughs> board to demolish and remove the structures located at 2028 Austin Lincoln Park Michigan is hereby approved by the council of the city of Lincoln Park and be it further resolved that the director of public works is hereby directed to comply with the order of the board as approved by the council after 20 days from the date of this resolution and be it further resolved that the director of public works shall determine the date of demolition and shall notify each party of interest as required by section 1444.10 of the codified ordinances and be it further resolved that the cost of demolition shall be assessed against the real property on which said structure is located such cost shall be reported to the city assessor who shall place said lien. I'll move. Support. Any questions? And then we will call for the vote. Mayor Higgins? Yes. Council Persons Ross? Yes. Bear? Yes. Dupre? Yes. Salcedo? Yes. And Zor? Yes. Pulling the trash. Pull the trash. Okay. Yeah. Um, then the next uh, item on the agenda is the trash contract, and we've decided to pull that off until the next meeting um, due to some scheduling conflicts. Resolved that the mayor and council award a bid for asbestos removal at 2105 Morris to S&M Contracting at a price not to exceed $12,340. Funds to come from account 2490499692D, Building Department Demolition. Any questions? And then we will call for a vote. Council Persons Ross? Yes. Dupre? Yes. Bear? Yes. Salcedo? Yes. Soar? Yes. And Mayor Higgins? Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
resolve that a special event permit number six be approved for it, for the first responder day event to be held in the Lincoln Park on Saturday, July 27, 2024 from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. Lincoln Park Community Center under the following conditions. The special event ceases at 3 p.m. Application shall be re 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 responsible for the cleanup and all debris associated with the event from the surrounding properties. Fees and fees paid and insurance fa filed. Any questions? Then we will call for the vote. Council Persons Ross? Yes. Dupre? Yes. Fair? Yes. Salcedo? Yes. Soar? Yes. And Mayor Higgins? Yes. And with that, we will go to the city manager's report. Thank you, Mayor. Um, a couple quick updates for you. We've talked about the animal shelter. Um, so where we are at with that now is we have poured the first portion of the concrete, so we are moving along. Um, the second portion is scheduled to go in this week of the concrete, weather permitting. Um, and the punch list primarily has been completed. There may be a couple small items that have to be um, completed, but overall the interior is pretty much done. Um, John has been working with DTE on getting the uh, the um, transfer scheduled from the old shelter to the new shelter and then once we have the final sign off from the building department as well as the inspection from the state which has been scheduled then we will be um, ready for the CFO and we can proceed to doing a grand opening there um, so we are working through that it can um, can't give you a definite time timeline yet but it's down from the eight weeks that's always the running joke so we are progressing on that so we should be moving into the new shelter here shortly um, and then I wanted to touch upon the priority um, contract so as you know priority bought the GFL contract out they took over officially July 1st so we have been working with them pretty closely over this past week there have still been some pickup issues um, they are still using a lot of GFL's equipment but they are beginning to transition that over to the pri priority equipment where they will be having cameras installed on everything um, and they'll be able to track the locations of the drivers where the pickups are they'll be able to see and Paul when he's here at the next meeting will be able to talk about um, the technology that they use it's it's quite impressive so they can actually see all the different views th throughout the truck but we don't have all of that yet because they did take over the old equipment um, they're working through quite a few issues um, as you know there was several communities that they purchased so it's not just Lincoln Park um, so they're they're being pretty responsive um, of course it's not where we want it to be but it's better than the previous service that we were getting I would encourage council and residents to still contact our office with any pickup issues if there's any missed pickups um, garbage cans we're working through that because it sounds like GFL just kind of dropped off the old list that they were working off of and we've tried to get them all of that information over um, so we are working on some of those broken can issues but if you report the issues to us we do have a, a direct um, email that we're sending all of the missed pickups and they are supposed to go out the very next morning and address those prior to doing the regular collection for the day I know there still have been some um, some issues but it does still seem to or it has started to kind of dwindle down over this past week um, but if you do report those to us we can also track it and make sure that things are are getting on track um, Paul's been very responsive he takes our phone calls right away so right now we're working with him we don't have our uh, direct rep assigned yet it may be Paul it may be somebody else but um, we're still working through all of that we'll get out more information to council and the residents as we receive it from them and that is all I have I'll take any questions I could just make a couple of comments Lisa um, priority actually was on Channel 4's news tonight oh okay yeah there are other communities having mm -hmm. issues too yeah the representative that uh, was interviewed uh, was very responsive as well and said they they are working on it they understand give them a little bit of time mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody else noticed though July 4th I saw garbage trucks out oh wow yeah they were in our city picking up garbage good, good. yeah yeah so i'm very confident that 
we're going to have better service. They're, they're very high on their customer service, and I know other companies promise that as well, but some of the contacts that we've spoken to throughout the bid process have spoke very highly of them. So um, I know Paul, you know, I, when I talked to him this morning, I said, you know, the calls have been down, so that's a good sign. He's, and to him, that's not enough. They want, it, they want it to the point where there's no calls. So we're working towards that. That's good, though. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Lisa. You're welcome. Uh, through the chair, on the same subject, Lisa, on these no pickups, do they get specific on what the cause was? I know you say these new vehicles are going to have cameras, but was it like a whole block missed? Was it just one house missed? What are, what are the causes? It's that been all over the place. They'll sometimes pass up one house but get the rest of the block. Sometimes they miss entire blocks or one section of the block, okay. one side of the block. All right, yeah. thank you. Any other questions for the city manager? Okay, then we will move on to our department head. This week we have the Parks and Recreation department head. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, so what do we have going on in Parks and Rec right now? Our kids club summer camp is going really, really well. We've actually had to turn away a couple of people only because we can't exceed a certain number right now. Right now we're averaging approximately 34 kids each week and they're renewing every week. So the program is really doing well. Next year we're going to look to expand the number. So adding maybe a couple more staff members to help out with that. So uh, the community center uh, right now is in maintenance mode, we'll call it. Um, we're getting stuff ready for the fall for the next season. We're going to be opening up on September 3rd. So ice rental slots are filling up fast. Um, so if anybody needs ice, they need to get to me quick because it's booking up. Um, the annual ice show, which was uh, back in May, um, went very well. Their numbers are way up again this year so they're looking to, they're going to be probably around 150 kids maybe more for next season which is really really good considering two years ago we were down around 35 40 kids so they've increased their numbers dramatically um <clears throat> last month um Myself, Austin, Carol, and Philip Wheatley from the arena, we all went to the North American Ring Conference and Expo in uh, Milwaukee. Um, I'm happy to say that Austin has finally completed all of his classes for his Certified Ice Arena Manager certification. So now you have two in the city, myself and Austin. Um, Philip also has completed his Certified Ice Technician certification. Um, and I also recertified for the second time, so I've, I've been a CIT for 10 years now. Um, we are the only city in, Lincoln, in the state of Michigan with three certified ICE technicians on staff. Uh, upcoming events right now, the concerts in the park are going strong. We've had some weather issues, shall we say. It always seems to pop up on Thursday. I don't know why. <laughs> um, but our upcoming one this week uh, for Thursday is Devin Skillian and the Arizona Sun. On the 18th, we'll have Toppermost, the Beals Tribute Band. And July 25th will be the Dan Rafferty Band. Uh, for the August schedule, you can find it on our website or find it on the uh, Facebook page. Um, Art in the Park is coming up and it's sponsored by the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services this year. Um, right now at four o'clock today, I was at 40 um, vendor applications have been turned in and I still have more coming in. We have extended the uh, deadline to next to this Friday at four o'clock and we're doing adults and youth vendors this year. So. Uh, Friday the 19th, which is um, Art in the Park, we'll have uh, some performances. 5 o'clock will be Gordon the Magician. 6 o'clock will be Nick Thomas, the Juggler. And 8 o'clock will be Transit Brothers. On Saturday at 2 o'clock, we're going to have Great Lakes 
Ty Tyco Center, uh, 3 o'clock Ironwood, 5 o'clock will be the Lincoln Park Dance Company will be there doing a performance, and, there's, and then 7 o'clock will be the Michigan Dueling Pianos. Uh, on Saturday, July 27th at the Community Center, we're going to be doing another movie in the park. Uh, we'll be showing Kung Fu Panda this year. Um, and we were talking just before the end of the day today of looking to add another one in August. But we're looking for a date that works, so we'll see what, we'll see what we come up with for that one. Uh, Lincoln Park Days, as you all know, is coming up at the end of August. Uh, the department's going to be doing a family activity area again this year. We're looking at some new games, new uh, activities and stuff for the families and kids and everybody to do. Um, this year, uh, the Community Center is going to be cel celebrating its 50th season. Um, and we are looking at a couple of different event ideas for the fall. So be watching for that. Um, last couple of things. We started working on the fall happenings today. Um, I believe we sent out an email uh, this afternoon. So start working on your letters, on your stuff that needs to go in, and make sure you send it over to me or over to Stephanie. Um, and that'll be going out mid-August so that it's in everybody's hands uh, by September. Lastly, the Parks and Rec Department has a few job openings. Um, right now I have an opening for concession cashier at the community center. Um, a building supervisor position um, is going to be opening up here at the end of August, um, and that's going to be in the office at the Parks and Rec office during the day. Um, and we're also still looking for um, a park maintenance person to handle the bathrooms and the pavilions um, throughout the week. Um, so if anybody's looking for a part-time job, go to the website, top left-hand corner is the employment tab, go right down there, jobs are right there. If anybody has any questions about the positions, feel free to give me a call, send me an email, shoot me a text. I can answer any of the questions you need about the jobs. And that is all I have for today. Any questions? Okay. Yes, go ahead. Dennis, did you say the movie in the park is at the community center? Yes, we're going to do the community center. It'll, we're going to probably do it on the side of the building this time be, instead of behind it, only because we had some lighting issues last year. Um, so we're going to try it a little different this time and maybe add some food trucks in there. We're, we're not really sure right now. Yep. I have, um, and it's totally free to the public. Very good. <laughs> um, quick comment. Mm -hmm. I was surprised when I was out garage sailing in the citywide at all the residents, their happenings. So good job on on the happenings and keeping that updated on, on the website as well. Mm -hmm. But as long as, I mean, you're doing a very nice job keeping the Parks and Rec section very updated. So I appreciate that. You're welcome. Thank you. Just want to congratulate you too on uh, Many people have commented on at the at the <laughs> concerts in the park. We've gotten now some bro uh, blocking in so that people can't drive in, and you've done a good job of that without going too far. And congratulations on that getting taken care of. It's been something that's been needed to be taken care of for a long time. Yep. All right. Any other chair? Yes. Dennis, is there any maintenance scheduled for anything recently or? Um, you know, any park, up, you know, updating any of the parks? Uh, right now, uh, we completed doing, I think it was five, maybe six parks with putting in new mulch and cleaning up the areas around it, replacing, uh, we replaced the surround on two of the playscapes. Uh, one of them was the playscape at Youth Center. We did replace the old wooden ties, railroad ties that are around it uh, with new plastic ones and installed an ADA ramp so that if somebody's in a wheelchair they could actually get into the area. <laughs> um, and we're, we're slowly systematically going to go through each park and try and m update them a little bit with at least the mulch and the surrounds. 
Um, and we're going to start with another set of uh, playgrounds here in the next month or so. Is the sp splash pad still part of getting something done this year? Or? Uh, we're, we're working on that. That's, that's a bigger, bigger project, and we're looking at the different funding sources and where it's going to come from. Thank you. Yep. Speaking of bigger projects, can you give me an update on the basketball court over at Youth Center? Uh, I have to get with um, with Ray over at uh, Hennessy uh, to work on the design for it and the specs, um, but we're going to be working on that very shortly. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Any other questions for, for Dennis? That was my question. Thank you, man. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you very much. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. And again, thank you for doing a good job over there. And with that, we're going to go to the public. If there's anybody who would like to speak to this body. Sure. Good evening, Council. I'm a highly burdened taxpayer. Can you give I me a name? Of, no, nope, I will not state my name today because you're not going to like what I have to say. Mr. Zelnack would approve of that also because I've called the mayor and the city manager about the problem with the ordinance officer. He harasses me time and time again about a wood pile. Four times he's come on my property saying I have wood on the ground. But yet he wants to use his job vindictively because I've called more than a year about these cars being stored on Frank Street illegally and they're still there more than a year. Now I see on Russell and Kemp, somebody must be running a business because there's vehicles parked in that empty parking lot that's for sale which has vehicles with no license plates, no nothing, but yet they're there, and they've been there for months, and the city owners, how's he driving around the city that he doesn't see these items, but yet he can see in my yard four times about a wood pile on the ground illegally? How dumb do you think I look? I know I may look stupid, but I'm not stupid to keep a wood pile on the ground on four different occasions for him to come to my house and harass me. Now, Mr. Zelbeck knows this situation because one, for one time I spent five hours in jail for this gentleman because he turned around and said I had a uh, compost bin illegally and they came on my property illegally to remove it while I sat in jail for five hours. I never seen a day in court, which I was supposed to, and I never went to court because Mrs. L. Dang, no, it didn't even show up on the docket because they wanted to scurry this thing under the rug. And I'm tired of you guys harassing me. Not the council, but the ordinance officer. He needs to assist and to stop right now with this. Because every time he came on my property by the wood pile, all of a sudden it was a compost bed. Now he, last time he said, I have a fence illegally lashed to a wire fence. Well, I got a list of, of wire fences that are el lashed illegally in the neighborhood. If you want to give me that list, I'll give you that list so he can go get those guys general, like he got me because you're not going to hold me accountable and not hold the rest of the city this way then because what's good for the goose is good for the gander. And if he can't do his job and he doesn't like his job, maybe he should quit his job because mayor and the manager knows I've called and contacted you guys about these vehicles parked on Frank Street. Not even parked, stored illegally for more than a year. They got bushes growing around one car on Paris Street. I've asked you guys to drive down there. I don't know what you guys did. I don't know. But yet, as a taxpayer, you want to attack me for a wood pile? I think that's ridiculous. That's why I won't say my name. So he can come harass me again for another wood pile? Am I right, Mrs. Elnick? You understand the situation. You, you were there when that happened about five years ago. Spent five hours in jail. Why don't you go spend five hours in jail and tell me how you like it? And then you get bailed out while your kids are there watching you come out of a jail cell. Yeah, I thought that was real amusing. So did he when I told him to the last time he came on my property. He just scuffed and smiled about like, ha ha, so what? You spent five hours in jail. And then he tells me he was there to inspect the property behind my house. As a building inspector. Well, what was a building inspector giving me a normal problem with a lawn then? He's not doing his job because while he was standing there, I said, what about that wood pile there? He goes, what? You want to turn on the father grieving? Why should I pile? You look at it. Nobody told you about my wood pile, but yet you turn on the father grievance or an ordinance violation. Why do you do it about the neighbor next door to me when he looked right at it? And that's what I mean. He's being vindictive. So somebody needs to straighten this ordinance officer out. And any more violations come to my house, we'll go to my lawyer. Thank you.
sir. We have a new building in, a director here. If you could please speak with him about this, I would appreciate it. And also the chief of police is in the back. If you have something you would like to talk to him about abandoned cars, please let them know. Thank you. Is there anybody else who would like to? With the ordinance officer, though, hmm? about him harassing me. It, he's the building or ordinance's boss. So please speak to him, and he can help you. I think that's very rude of him. Tried to use his job vindictively. Don't talk anymore. Are you away from the mic? Um, it's time's up too. So, is there anybody else who would like to speak to the council? And with that, we will go on to the council members. Uh, and report. Go to the council president. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just uh, my condolences to the Mann family. Uh, you know, I remember Virginia on uh, TV, the council meetings, and she was always a uh, spitfire and always had great recommendations. And uh, when I first got elected, she says, now, Carlos, you ever do anything, you just give me a call. And uh, she, she was always nice. We just saw her at the bell ringing ceremony, and she looked fine. So my condolences to the family, and that's, that's all, Your Honor. And thank you. Um, <coughs> Tracy? I visited my friends at the farm market Sunday, and I'm so proud of their effort for growing the market. Lots of vendors and visitors. The market's open Sunday from 11 to 3 on 4th Street, right next to the park restaurant at Mellis Park. Get out and make the market part of your summer. Everyone enjoy all the events planned by the city this summer. And with that, I say good night and God bless. Okay. Tracy. <laughs> well, again. My condolences to Virginia, Von, uh, Virginia Munden's family as well. I know that the Historical Commission is going to miss her. I'm going to miss her. She's a true example of community service. So, uh, We have a lot going on. I know um, our Parks and Rec Director talked about a, a lot of the things that we have. Art in the Park on July the 19th and the 20th. The, 20, uh, the 27th is actually going to be a busy day. Um, they have the, their monthly park cleanup from 10 to 2. You can go to the band shell and, um, that morning and register. The um, 27th is also, we passed the resolution for the uh, first responder day at the community center from 12 to 3. I know they did this last year and it was a really good turnout. It's really, really is a nice event. And also on the 27th, the uh, Lincoln Park Garden Walk uh, is back by popular demand. You can pick up your map at the museum from nine to one and uh, you do the garden walk at your own pace. So you can enjoy that. Um, and then the 27th, as the uh, Parks and Rec Director mentioned, at 8 p.m. is the movie in the park at the community center. So hopefully we will see you <laughs> at one of these events or more than one. Thank you. It's gonna be a busy day. Yes. yes. Jason. Hello. Um, I would also like to extend my condolences to the Virginia Mondin family as well. And the only thing I really have is, yes, July 27th is a very busy day. I will be participating in the Run to Honor 5K walk that's put on by Lincoln Park's own uh, Aaron Battelle. Uh, this is a, a big fundraiser for his nonprofit that he dedicates to serving uh, vet veterans. Um, as most people behind the car know, he was the one that helped us get our, our memorial signs on Fort Street for uh, Ser Sergeant Craig Franks. And this is the first year I'll be participating in it, so I am uh, lo looking forward to that. And uh, that's all I have. Enjoy the summer. Enjoy the great event. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Mr. Zor. Yeah, first I'd like to offer my condolences to the Mondin family as well as to the Perino, uh, Julie Motti family uh, for Perino Industries. He was 84 years old. He passed away uh, in June. Um, we missed it. I just wanted to make not, uh, note of it. 
and send our condolences to the family. Absolutely. They are a big part of our community. Um, and with that, uh, that's all I have other than I wish to speak with you and uh, Lisa after the meeting, if that's possible, sir. Absolutely. Uh, and that's all I have for this evening. Okay. Thank you very much. With that, we'll take a motion to adjourn. adjourn. So move. Support. Councilperson Salcedo? Yes. Dupre? Yes. Bear? Yes. Ross? Yes. Soar? Yes. And Mayor Higgins? Yes. I've got to look for my...